Welcome to Winning Inside, the show where we follow the journey from feeling defeated to winning. Here are your hosts, Chetty Matthews and Michelle Wickman. Hello, amazing people. Welcome to the Winning Inside podcast, where we discuss real issues, insights, and solutions with each other and guests to help you thrive in your day-to-day lives. We know life happens, and we can choose to be a spectator or a participant. These conversations and stories are about the participants, the ones who made the choice to do the inner work and found a way to keep moving forward. So, Chetty. Good morning. Hello. How are you? (laughs) I am great. It was an awesome weekend of basketball with my son. Love it. Love it. They won their tournament and their bracket or their age group. And so it's Uh actually a perfect... (laughs) <laughs> it's a perfect subject because we mentioned last week in last week's podcast about this concept of the people that you hang out with. So yeah. in, in sociology, it's called or referred to as a reference group. So mm-hmm. the people that you are immersed with and surrounded by within a certain subject matter or context. Nice. Nice. Good deal. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah, the people you hang out with, the people that you associate with. I love that. It's actually, it's funny how this kind of dovetailed in from last week's episode, and it's Mm -hmm. a perfect fit into this week. And, you know, we have so many different kinds of groups. We don't think of them that way. And think about it. When you're born, you're in a group. It's your family. That's the first reference group you have. You hang out with your family. And that can be disassociated. It can be tied. It can include additional family, the extended family. So. That's it's it's very it's an interesting dynamic. I mean, it really is, and it does affect the outcome of your life. It really does. Well, it's it's where you learn, right? You learn so much in those formative years, yes. and your behaviors, your thoughts. A lot of those are actually formulated early on in life, and so they're heavily influenced by your family. Yeah. And then moving forward, your friends, particularly when you hit the middle age or middle school age. Middle school um, age. <laughs> oh, that's where we're at right now. So yes. particularly when you hit that age, yeah. you are heavily influenced by your friends as a reference group. So again, it's it's if you want to look at it as it's a frame of reference for your thoughts and behaviors. And so the group mentality, the group mindset influences each other. It's not, I mean, everybody brings their individual thoughts and behaviors into the group, but the group heavily influences the individual. Yes. And you see that in many areas, not just in families, even though that is to me, the primary example we have of that. But as we ascend through life, like you said, family, friends, work even. I mean, some people have jobs where it's just like, yeah, I just go and I go home. But other people have jobs where that is just a, such a huge part of your lives. And the people you work with are almost like a family. and You have a, a way that you do things. An example could be the military or police department. It could be any organization where people have a close-knit family. I'm going to presume, I don't work this way, I wouldn't know, but places like Amazon and Apple and Facebook, those kind of corporations have a certain personality. And people that work there are Amazonians and they act a certain way because this is what we do here. This is how we are. And it goes into that corporate culture, people align to it or they don't align to it based on the fact that it meets a need in their life or it's something that they're congruent with. So yeah, this makes a lot of sense. But Michelle, That's right. yeah, you know a lot about other kinds of groups because- <laughs> <laughs> Well, what the reference that I, I mentioned last week was fitness or health. And then what I just shared about my son was would be sports, yes. right? So his- sports team, his basketball team is they heavily influence their thoughts and behaviors just in terms of how they relate to one another. Right. Yes. I played sports growing up as well. I played in college. And so there is a group mindset in terms of competitiveness, in terms of drive, in terms of focus. It's a group mindset that actually carries forward and influences your thoughts and behaviors Mm -hmm. as you perform on the court or within that 
you know, sporting space. Yeah. For me, what I was speaking to last week was at my gym, we competed in, well, and it, you're only always competing against yourself, but of course there's an opportunity to win prizes as well. <laughs> there's a 60 day challenge. And so the mindset, the way that they, they structure it is we're on teams and I loved my team. And one of the reasons is that we were so aligned in how we approached this challenge was that it really was for us as individuals, you know, what we wanted to get out of it as our individual journeys. And I can't speak to the other team's experiences. I believe it's very similar, but on my team, you know, we just really focused on what was our individual journey? What was our individual goal? But we were all focused on a similar health-based goal. And so that really just elevated our performance, if you will, in this challenge overall. Yeah. So whether it's with this challenge or whether it's at a gym, when you go to a gym and the people that I'm at a smaller boutique gym, and so I see, and I go to the 4.15 a.m. class, as you oh know. Oh my gosh, <laughs> make it stop. <laughs> so yes, this is true. And that being said, you have to imagine that the people that come in every, almost every single day, mind you, Monday through Friday, I mean, Saturdays and Sundays we sleep in. So we go to 7 a.m. classes. Oh, sleep in but for two and a half hours. It's kind of cute. <laughs> but <laughs> the people who show up consistently for 4 15 a.m. class, who is that going to be? And so we see the same faces almost every single day. And the beauty behind that is the mentality and the mindset. We learn how we can push each other to continue to improve while being supportive of one another at the same time. And it's yes. such a beautiful space for people who are truly pursuing goals and so around health and fitness. And I, that is what I'm talking about in terms of the positive benefits of finding a reference group that can support you in your goal pursuit. And with that, I wanted to have you share your experience because the, there's another group that can be so powerful. So some people call them masterminds, personal and professional development, whatever you want to frame that around. But you are part of a group that I am so inspired by every time that you mention them called MenX. Yes. And MenX for me is the male entrepreneur experience. And it is such a phenomenal group. It is mostly focused on business professionals and entrepreneurs. However, we don't talk about business in the beginning. We get to know each other. And as you said, Michelle, because you show up every day at the same time, you get to know the common values and goals. So truth is we do business with people we know, trust, and like. So before we do any business or even talk about business, we get to know the people, trust them, and like each other. We show up in each other's lives. They called me this weekend to check on me. I'll call them. We post on each other's social media. We're like, we're a family of people that in ordinary walks of life, we probably wouldn't even meet each other wouldn't have conversations with one another. And the beauty of that is we now get to have friends that we probably wouldn't get to have in any other circle or any other space. We get close. We talk about business in a way that helps because we all have common goals to help each other grow. And what you learn in this mastermind setting, it's almost like there's a collective genius. And even Think and Grow Rich, the book, if you ever read the book, Think and Grow Rich, it talks Absolutely. about this collective genius when you have a mastermind group, because there may be an area that you're deficient in. As I said last week, I'm not banging nails in a house because I'm afraid the walls are going to fall down. But if you have a car issue, I might be the guy. If you have a computer issue, there may be someone else. If you have a financial issue, there may be somebody else in the group. If you have an emotional issue, there may be somebody who can help in that space. And what you learn is all that knowledge coming together, all ships rise in the tide. So everybody collectively grows and propels and advances. And it's so beautiful. No judgment. It's a safe, not only is it a safe space, but I'll go on to say it's a brave space because these gentlemen will, they will challenge you. They will push you to go to certain areas and to challenge your limiting beliefs and give you alternative ways of thinking or seeing a situation. They'll explain how they've gone through stuff. And all of that helps everybody to grow. So this group, you go in this group and you want to be a part of this group because of what you get and what you can give and how everyone can grow in this group. And the bonding that happens is beautiful. We go on what we call mandates, which is, you know, just two guys maybe just getting together to have coffee. We don't even talk about business, just talk about the families and talk about life and talk about other things. So you get to know people and you know, it's great. 
it's great to have any kind of an organization that enables you to do that. But are those the only kind of groups? Of course not, because there are faith-based groups as well. Think about it. People go to churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, any other place of worship where they have this collective faith that brings them together with a common goal. So, and if you can, if you were to think about it in your life, reflect on the different kinds of groups that affect you and that you have been affected by and that you aspire to be in. So I wanted to jump back to your professional group yes. that you were speaking to. And again, it doesn't matter. You know, Chetty gave a very specific example of a group that he has access to. And yeah. that's a, you know, it's a hyperlocal one. But what he's speaking about also is a networking group. So that is for entrepreneurs in particular, which we associate with a large number of entrepreneurs. <laughs> yes. That is the majority of our professional life right now is working yes. with entrepreneurs as our clients, yeah. mindset, you know, mastermind groups, different courses that we both take yes. are all essentially entrepreneurs. And there's definitely a certain spirit to an entrepreneur that we just feel so fueled by and get mm -hmm. so inspired by. And so with that being said, whether or not you're an entrepreneur, there are certainly different, you know, development groups out there. Yeah. There are mom groups that I know of yes. where you can get together with people who are experiencing the same current life experiences. Yes. And so finding those groups where you feel like you want to connect with other people and really grow and learn and just you know, be in the same space as somebody who is in the same journey as you. That's what we're talking about in terms of choosing a reference group. So you may not be able to relate specifically to Chetty's example, but what he's saying is, hey, there are these really unique and amazing opportunities to connect with like-minded individuals out there. You just have to go find them yes. because family, we didn't get to choose that when we were born, right? And, and, regardless of what your relationship or your dynamic is with your family as it is now, regardless of, you know, these long-term friend groups that you may be a part of, regardless of where you work and whether or not the corporate culture of that employment space resonates with you and your core values, regardless of all those things, there is an opportunity. And especially now where there's so much virtual connection happening yes. to connect with like-minded individuals across the country, if not the world, and really just elevate your own personal energy, elevate your own personal vibration, right? Because when you are in that space with people who are experiencing the same life experiences, you really connect at a different level. You build these strong connections incredibly fast. Yes. Yeah. It's one of those things where you've probably heard the saying, iron sharpens iron. And sometimes like-minded people can promote and provoke other people to do better because now you have accountability. You have collective accountability. If you don't show up, i.e. at the gym to work out, people are going to call you out on it. They're going to ask questions. They're going to call you out or you're going to not want to let the group down. So you do things even if you don't feel like you want to do them. And it's beautiful because like you said, it's great to have the family, the friends, the work or whatever, but having a group that you've chosen for your reasons and you and you only only you know why you need that group and only that group can help you in the area that you need help in or support or encouragement that is golden and that is going to help you to keep going but what i would like to kind of have you consider if you don't have any kind of a group and you're suffering in silence if you're just alone feel like you're the only person out there i have learned in many of the areas where i thought it was just me there's no one else who can have a story as crazy as mine Find a group where you're having a deficiency or an issue or a concern or a challenge and you realize, oh, wait, you went through the same thing that I went through. Wait, so there are two people on this planet. That, wait, there's seven people that have gone. Wait, there's a whole group of people that have gone through what you're going through. This is amazing because now when I speak to you, you can relate. I don't sound crazy. I don't sound like I'm isolated. I realize this happens and it happens to more than just me. That can be empowering sometimes. I agree. And that being said, there are many options out there. So it's and it's kind of like dating. And I hope <laughs> you can join a group, check it out, test it out. And if it doesn't serve you, if it doesn't work for you, move it on. Thank move you on. and bye-bye. Yeah. Keep it moving. Keep, <laughs> Keep it moving. It rolling. So yes. you do not need to hang out or feel guilty or anything like that. If it doesn't serve you, if it 
feels like it's actually energy draining, then it's not the right space for you. And that is okay. Yes. But, and with that, what we're talking about also is understanding and building an awareness of your energy levels within the groups that you currently exist in, right? So I've worked in a very toxic work environment previously. And the challenge with that is sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you're just like, oh, <laughs> oh, man, I have to go into work today, right? Yeah. And I've also worked in an amazing work environment that was like, I was just kind of excited, right? Yeah. I wasn't excited to necessarily go in and do certain you know, responsibilities or tasks or projects or whatever it was, but I was still excited to see the people that I was going to get to work with. Yeah. I was excited to just be in that space and perform or contribute to the organization as a whole. And those things did excite me. So I've worked in both of those kinds of work environments. Now, yes. I wasn't being consciously aware of the toxic work environment and how that really affected my energy. Really what happens is it affects my thoughts. Yes, absolutely. Right? And yeah. so I know that we've talked about self-talk yeah. and that's something that Chetty speaks to all the time. And we both harp on all the time with our clients yes. in, in a positive way because yeah. self-talk has a tendency to move really automatically towards the negative. So I wasn't consciously aware of how the self-talk showed up in the toxic work environment in a negative way. And the, part of that had to do with, you know, essentially just absorbing some of the culture, if you will, yes, <laughs> and language, if you will. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then me turning it on myself. And so it was almost like doubling down on the toxicity, like you mentioned, yeah. instead of really just saying, oh, wait a minute, that is just, that's a negative thought that isn't even mine. I don't have to own that. I don't have to carry it. I don't have to ruminate on it. I can let it go and move forward. So self-awareness. Exactly. But I didn't have that <laughs> at the time. <laughs> that was pre-mindfulness, mind you. Yes. Um, but it's such a, it's it's such a powerful tool to check yourself when you know that one of your reference groups maybe isn't necessarily the most positive and that you can come away from it with spending time in that reference group and feel really drained and have a negative mindset to just check yourself, give yourself a moment to just become aware of the thoughts that are showing up in your brain, become aware of the body sensations that are showing up in your body and to give yourself some space to let that go. Yes. And we can talk a little bit more about different mindfulness tools in a future episode. Oh, yes. You know, just like breath work, a body scan, walking meditation, a lot of these really simple tools that can take anywhere from one to five minutes to just reset your mind, reset your body so that you can get to the present space and get out of that negative self-talk sort of spiral that's going on. So my point in all of this is to recognize, am I going into a space with a reference group that can negatively impact me physically, emotionally, mentally? Mm -hmm. And what do I need to offer myself in order to, you always say, hey, protect yourself before you go into that space. You like to remind me of that, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. So how do you remind yourself of that? How do I, how do you protect yourself? And the simplest thing to offer you is just to come back to your breath, right? Yes. So you always have your breath until from the moment you are born. Wow. To the moment, exactly. Yep that you pass from this earth in the physical form, you have your breath. Yeah. So come back to your breath when you know that you're going into a negative space, when you know that you're starting to experience stress, you can come back to your breath and just start counting your breathing pattern and yeah. slowing it down. That is the simplest thing that you can do to protect your energy and to reset your mind. That sounds like it was for me. So thank you, Michelle. I'm going to use that and put that <laughs> in my pocket. I feel like I needed that some of that this weekend. I feel like I was just in my own head this weekend, trying to do some work. And that would have helped. And it was funny because I was in that space and one of the people from one of my groups called me, hey, Chetty, you okay? Just checking on you. And I was like, wow, thanks. That was perfect timing. Random and out of the blue. 
I appreciated that so much. And you realize, hey, you're not alone. And here's a person who's on a growth journey, just like I am, checking on someone else on that growth journey. And the funny thing is, whether he knew it or not, I needed it at that moment. And I always hope I can do that for someone else because I needed that. I felt like if I was treading water, my head was going under the water and I was getting a little bit of, you know, salt water in my nostrils and somebody came by and kind of pulled me up a little bit. I was like, oh, thanks. I'm good. And it just helps you to know that you are still okay. Because if you stay by yourself, you can sometimes go into a panic cycle and then things just get worse and worse and you amplify them. And Michelle, I'm going to add something to what you said. You said that people, if you're in a group and it doesn't align with you and it's draining your energy, then be free to roll out, be on your way and find another one. But I'm going to add something to that and add a challenge to that. If it's because it makes you uncomfortable and it's questioning where you are, that may be a point of growth. And if it's triggering you in certain ways, you may want to discover why that is. That is not the same as it draining your energy. That is it actually challenging some of the things you may be going through right now. So when you do decide to exit and have an exit plan, find out why you don't like the group. Is it because you don't like the group inherently? doesn't align with you. You don't feel what they're saying. You feel uncomfortable. Or is it that they're talking about things that are actually dinging you at your heartstrings and you're like, oh, that's too close. That's, they're talking directly to me and about me. That could be a different thing. So be very introspective about the reason for exiting. If the group sucks, be on your way. Be out. Do not stay. Run forest. But if it's because, oh my gosh, they're talking about, they're talking about things that I've actually gone through. They're talking about divorce in a way that affects me personally. Well, maybe, just maybe. And that's not saying stay when it's miserable, but if there's a position for growth or an opportunity for growth, try to make that more of a brave space than a safe space. That's my two cents on that. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. And I think we talk about safe space a lot. So I don't want to, I, I don't want to take away from the concept of safe space, right? Very safe versus safe space. Mm -hmm. It is still a safe space. Yes. It's just that you're being challenged Correct. and challenged for growth. And so that self-discovery and that self-awareness is a critical component of, you know, deciphering whether or not this is a space for me or not. Now, like Chetty said, the negative, if it, if it's going to a negative place, then that's not a safe space. Yes. And yes. that's where you leave. But we also know that some of these reference groups may not be that safe a space. They may be a little bit negative. They may be a little bit toxic, but it's not an opportunity for you to be like, well, Michelle and Chetty said, I need to put my two weeks in. So here we go. <laughs> That's not what we're saying. No. That's not what we're saying. <laughs> That's why we give you these, this idea, this concept of, you know, checking your thoughts. How do you support yourself knowing that it may not be the, the safest, most comfortable space for you? So, you know, how do you protect your own energy? How do you get back to that space of being able to execute what you need to do? or being able to be around your family. I know I've had a lot of conversations around toxic families as well. That's a thing. And it is a thing. That's a big um, thing. <laughs> so, you know, you're not necessarily just gonna be like, bye family, I'm never gonna talk to you again. And if that's what serves you and, and that's the dynamic, that's okay too. That's We're not exactly. saying it's good or bad. We're not gonna label any of these choices. It's becoming aware that it is a choice. Yes. Right? And yeah. so, and the reason is, <laughs> and this goes into another conversation that we're going to have, but the reason is that it empowers you. Oof. So you don't have to wake up every morning and say, oh, I have to go into work, right? Yeah. Because right off the bat, your energy is down. Yes. It's drained. And so you're starting your day in that way instead of, thinking that space, it's, hey, I'm choosing to go into work. Yeah. And it's very neutral, right? Yeah, It's not a negative thought. It's a very neutral thought. And I'm choosing to do this. I know in this great big world, there are other opportunities. And if I chose to pursue them, I could, but I am choosing to do this thing. I am not forced to do it. I am responsible for this action. Yeah. So the concept of this is to become aware that it is a choice. You are empowered to make a choice. You are empowered as to how you can speak with your family and relate to your family. Yes. You have a choice in all of these matters. And when you realize that you have a choice, when you feel like you have a choice, 
your sensation of empowerment versus being a victim or versus being forced into these experiences and actions, your experience of being empowered elevates. Yes. And that translates to your energy for the entire day. It translates to all the other reference groups in your life as well. When you begin to live with choice. Yes. So, and I know <laughs> this all started with, right? The idea of reference groups, the concept really boils down to the fact that there is a power of one, the collective mindset, how it can influence the individual. Yes. But there is also a power in recognizing that being part of these groups, being part of this reference group actually is empowering, yes. right? And I can even grow in a space that is negative. Yeah. I can grow in you know, a toxic work environment, I can grow in all of these spaces because I choose it. Okay. Yes. So it does influence your mindset, but how you respond to that influence can be your choice. Wow. That right there is a mic drop. I wish I had a mic so I could drop it, but I don't want to break the poor thing. But that right there was profound, hit the nail on the head. And if you get nothing from this podcast, what Michelle just said is, is what you need to take away from this because living your life empowered, making actions that have inspired, doing things that help you to be determined and focused and just growth based. How do you, you win in that construct? You win. So you're looking for that opportunity. I love this. And you, honestly, with that, Michelle, you hit the nail on the head. I'm, 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 I'm done. You know, I can kick this can down the road because you really, that was very poignant what you just said. And I think it's going to change people's lives if they adopt it and realize that you have the power to associate with who you want to find the groups that are going to help you in your way. And if there's a group that has a negative element, that's okay. It doesn't mean the group is negative. It just means it's human based We're people. And sometimes we miss the mark, but generally speaking, you have the ability to empower yourself and empower a group with your awesomeness and the light that you bring to add value to others. And that value is going to become collective and everybody's going to benefit from the gold that you bring. So you're needed in these groups, just as the groups need you, and you need the groups, those two together, that mutualism, that mutually beneficial construct is going to help everybody to win. So I hope that you find those groups. I hope that you find any kind of support that's going to help you to be empowered, inspired, and just be on the winning side of life. And with that, Michelle, I'm done talking because you knocked this out of the box. You really did. So thank you again. I appreciate uh, spending some time with you because I always get some gems and some nuggets and I feel like I'm going to put those in my own pocket. So, grazie, merci, and danke. You're welcome. <laughs> well, <laughs> so thank you, Chetty. I appreciate you. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, follow, share, and most importantly, use whatever adds value to your amazing life. Remember, even if life puts barriers in our way, we are still moving forward. Sign in each Monday for a new episode of Winning Inside. Thank you for listening to Winning Inside with Chetty Matthews and Michelle Wickman. If you enjoyed today's show, please make sure to click the follow button, rate and review at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can connect with Chetty and Michelle at winninginside.io. Keep listening. Another episode is coming soon.